Good afternoon. Happy Thursday. This is the day, as I say, every day that God has made. Let's make a decision, as did David. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. I'm always happy to greet you in the masters and powerful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Wow, I don't know where the time goes. Can you believe that today is March the 11th? So time is marching on, but let's take advantage of every day that God gives, knowing that it is a day of Thanksgiving. The weather is beautiful outside. Let me encourage you to go out. Thank God for the sunshine. Embrace the warm weather. Take a walk around the block and just thank God for his goodness and for the blessings of a new day. Well, let me greet some of you, which I didn't get a chance to do yesterday as such. Okay, Sister Charlene Carey, how are you? Valerie Ellis, how are you? Sister Ruby Ramsey, Angela Thornton, how are you? Lillian Smiley, Ken Robinson, how are you? Sister, well, I already said hello to you, Sister Ramsey. Always good to see you. Good to see all of you. All right, so just a couple of announcements. Please plan to join us on Sunday for our in-person worship services if you can. Our youth will be participating in the service, and we will celebrate Holy Communion on this Sunday. On the third Sunday is Men's Day. We ask for your support. All the funds that the men raise, even in this pandemic season, will go to charities and missions. So we look for your support there. And people are asking me, I'm um, Pastor, what's going to happen on Palm Sunday? On Palm Sunday, we will celebrate Palm Sunday. We will also distribute safely and carefully in this pandemic season. We will um, distribute palms on Palm Sunday, which is the fourth Sunday, which will be March the 28th. So we look to celebrate and remember all of our major high holy days and just thank God for being God because he's worthy to be praised, as I say every Sunday, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, God's name is worthy to be praised. Okay, um, the word of today. Today's word, and I tell you, God never ceases to amaze me. Today's word is going to be wonderful counselor. Wonderful counselor. Um, the emphasis will be on counselor. Okay, um, definition for counselor. Counsel is a person who counts, counsels, advises, leads one in a right direction. And, you know, sometimes we have counselors. Um, also, sometimes we may have therapists. And, you know, really, if you have challenges, it doesn't mean that you're crazy because you go to see a therapist. I mean, if you go, if you have a toothache, you go to a dentist. If your feet aches, you go to a podiatrist. You have problems with your eyes, you see an ophthalmologist. So if we're just trying to have mental health, and really, there's no question about it, this pandemic has affected all of us in some way. None of us are exactly where we were before this. And so we need to know that there is one who can give us direction. Again, I'm using my book of meditations from Sarah Young. It's titled, Jesus is Always Called. Let me turn it this way. And maybe this may be upside right for you. Um, but the wonderful book of meditation and today's meditation is one of the names is Wonderful Counselor. At least that's how it opens. So let me just share it with you. Then we'll unpack some, some, some of God's word because no matter what, God's word will stand forever. And so the author is writing on behalf of Jesus. So as I read this, just use your imagination and consider that God himself is speaking or the creator is speaking um, to you, all right? And I want you to consider these words that this meditation says that is the um, impetus and the catalyst for what I want to say out of God's word today. One of my names is Wonderful Counselor. I understand you far, far better than you understand yourself. So come to me with your problems and insecurities, seeking my counsel. In the light of my loving presence, 
you can see yourself as you really are, radiantly, lovely, in my brilliant righteousness. Though my righteousness is perfect, you will continue to struggle with imperfections, yours and others. As long as you live in this world, still your standing with me is secure. Nothing in all creation can separate you from my love. Paul writes in Romans, what can separate me from the love of God? Nothing. A good counselor helps you recognize truth and live according to it. Actually, I was born and came into the world to testify of the truth. So be open and honest when you bring me your concerns. Also, fill your mind and heart with my word, which contains absolute truth. A wonderful counselor is not only extremely good at helping people, but also able to inspire delight or pleasure. Delight yourself in me, beloved, and I will give you the desires of your heart. Which of us sometimes feel a sense of lostness, not sure exactly which way to go? Then that's when we need to turn to God, who is a wonderful counselor. Let's take a look now at the prophecy of Isaiah chapter 9. Number one, if you're taking notes, I want you to know that it's time to walk in the light. Okay, write this down. I am going to walk in the light. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth after me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of light. The prophet Isaiah prophesied thousands of years before. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. Understand, I know we've been going through struggles. There's been some dark times, but I want you to know that it's time to walk in the light. I encourage you to embrace the sunshine, but more importantly, embrace the light of God's love and the light of God's power goes on to say, you have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. What happens when you have planted seed and the harvest comes, it's time to rejoice. When a warrior is at war, kills soldiers that are the opposition, he's able then to relieve um, his victims of whatever goods they may have had. For they no longer belong to them. That's what plunder is. God wants to bless you. Even in the midst of this pandemic, God wants to give you a blessing. Now, what Isaiah does is he prophesies years before it happens that Jesus Christ, the wonderful counselor, will come. I'm almost at close. He says, for unto us a child is born. To us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. There was opposition for the Lord Jesus because the Roman emperor felt threatened. King Pilate, King Herod, the government, they sought to put him to shame and ultimately to death. But you and I both know, which we will celebrate in a few weeks, that God would raise Jesus from the dead. Jesus would get up and proclaim all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And he shall be called Wonderful Counselor. Not only is Jesus just a counselor, but he is a wonderful counselor. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So if you don't know which way to go, you want to hook up with the one who can be your GPS system. And I tell you, when I've made the mistakes, it's only because I did not adhere to that small, still voice that was in my spirit. Know that Jesus is a wonderful counselor. He will not lead you wrong because he is truth. He's not a man that he should lie. 
Not only is he a wonderful counselor, Isaiah tells us, but he is the mighty God. He is the creator of heaven and earth. He is the creator of you and me. Paul says in Colossians that he is before all things and in him and through him all things consist. It is God who holds all things together by the power of his strength and the power of his love. He is the everlasting father. In other words, there is no beginning, no ending from, for him. Before there was a when or where, God was there. Um, John says, in the beginning was the word and the word was God. There really is no was for God. God is never in the past tense. God always is and was for our edification because when there was nothing, there was God. And after things were created, there was God. And when this whole world passes away, God will still be there. I remember my dad used to tell a story. He used to say, son, you can forget about me. You don't have to worry about me, but don't forget about God because God goes up the road, sits on a stump, Sooner or later, you have to come by. There is no end and no beginning for him. He is the Prince of Peace. There's so much confusion in this world because we have, yet not, we have not yet come to know the one who is the Prince of Peace. Because when you know him, there's some things you can't do. Old, our old folks used to say uh, in the language of our forefathers and mothers, when they met the Lord, they said, when I looked at my hands, they looked new. When I looked at my feet, they did too. There's a great change since I've been born. God will make you do the right thing through the power of the Holy Ghost, even when you don't want to. When you know him, you don't hold on to grudges. You don't allow a stronghold to take place in your life. But you learn to let some of that stuff go so that you can be free. Because those whom the Son sets free are free indeed. I talked about that yesterday. And then we can celebrate what God has done. And then he goes on to say, of the greatness of his government and peace, there shall be no end. To know him is to walk in peace. To know him is to walk in love. To know him is to walk in joy. And so if you're taking notes, it's time to walk in the light. Why? Because he is the wonderful counselor. And finally, God will do what he said. Here it is in verse 7. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. And then Isaiah the prophet, he concludes this section by saying how would this happen? The zeal, the power, the passion, the love of the almighty God will accomplish this. Look, he may not come when you want him, but he'll be on time. I trust in God. I know he cares for me, a mountain bleak or on the rolling sea. Our heavenly father watches over me. Yesterday we said it's time to celebrate. Today, I want us to walk with the one who is the wonderful counselor, the Prince of Peace, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, and of the greatness of his government and peace, there shall be no end. For he shall reign, how long? Forever and ever and ever. And how is all this gonna to come together? Because the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the blessed Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, for another day we give you thanks and thank you for reminding us that when we don't know which way to turn, we can turn to the one who is the wonderful counselor, the Prince of Peace, the mighty God, and the everlasting Father. Bless those that are under the sound of my voice those that may hear us later, those that would want to be here but for whatever reason cannot, help them to know that we can cast our cares upon you because you care for us. We thank you now, God, for all the things that you're doing. We thank you that this stimulus package has been passed and that some people will get some financial relief and those young people that are in poverty, 
may be lifted to another level. Guide those persons that are responsible for the distribution of these funds that it may happen in a way that is equitable to the end that your people can be lifted. Because you said in your word, blessed are the poor in spirit, for they shall inherit the kingdom of God. And so we trust you. We pray, oh God, for those that are sick and those that are shut in, not only with COVID-19, but other issues, high blood pressure, heart problems, arthritis, sugar diabetes. You are able. There's more healing to him be God in all the hospitals in all the world. And then certainly we thank you that we can see a light at the end of the tunnel, but we got to hold on. Help us to not give up. We talked about persevering, knowing that the race is not given to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, but to those who endure to the end. Thank you for a fresh word every day. Morning by morning, new mercies we see. All we have needed, your hands have provided. Great is your faithfulness. Hear our prayer now. Incline your ear to us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. Some of you I had not seen. Um, Angela but Baptiste, thank you for um, tuning in. Melody, how are you? Wanda Roberts, we haven't talked in a long time. Jacqueline Wallace, thank you for being so faithful. Sister Hazel Bess, um, Carolyn Danglade, good to talk to you earlier. Elizabeth King, Maxine Bell, good to see all of you. Sister Shirley Millard, all of you know that God loves you and so do I and that there's nothing that can happen to us that we together with God cannot handle. Hi, you, brother Michael Walker. Missed you and I after our chat last night. Um, thank those of you who joined us for our Bible study. We had a wonderful study. Hope that you will join with us next week. Um, I do have some volunteers that have agreed to step up to do Bible study. I'll speak with them and confirm, see what will happen. And so we will finish the last two lessons in the book that deals with, I believe, um, the women in the Bible, um, Lydia and Priscilla. So read both lessons. We'll try to put them both together and then we'll move into our new book. You should have your new book by the end of the week. All right, I've kept you too long. Let me get back to work. Um, God bless you. Know that God loves you and so do I. Let's receive the benediction. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance, grant you his peace and his love and you're going in and in you're going out and you're down sitting and you're uprising till we shall stand in his presence through Jesus the Christ, to whom be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Amen. God bless you. Um, I'll see you tomorrow. And then, of course, on Saturday is our Sabbath. On Sunday, we'll gather together to worship God because he alone is worthy to be praised. God loves you, and so do I.